very forgettable, very forgettable year. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes, it's superhero slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And welcome to our After Hours After the Game Rundown. Oh, After Dark. Ooh, it might get a little too risque. Probably (laughs) won't. But we're talking movie trailers we saw today. We're talking TV commercials we saw today. And maybe... Some game highlights, if there were any, and if we're feeling frisky. Yeah, that's right. We we, we told y'all we'd do it. Uh, we're right fresh off the game. Luckily, we're not uh, drunk or hammered. Uh, Says so you. We, I got we, this <laughs> hard seltzer water. Uh, is, that, is that the mermaid hard seltzer water? It is we were, not. We were just talking about that before we got on the mic. I was like, who on earth gave this alcoholic seltzer company enough money to buy a trailer at the top of the Super Bowl. Yeah. So uh, Chris thinks it's probably a subsidiary of some sort of global conglomerate, which probably makes sense. That That's the most accurate solution now, I can think of. Now, n- cl- correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't see any Coca-Cola commercials this year. Which is bizarre, yeah. so considering it's in Atlanta. So... Uh, we, me and my wife were trying to figure out what is going on here. I just think Pepsi decided to just pony up the dollars and just th- – uh, no, there actually there was Coca-Cola commercials. They just weren't very memorable. There was uh, – um, there was – honestly, like, th- there were kind of some of those more like dramatic commercials. I remember one where it was just like, oh, everyone drinks Coca-Cola. Sometimes you, sometimes you can, sometimes you don't have to. It kind of seemed like a weird cigarette commercial to me. <laughs> <laughs> which was kind of weird. And then there might have been like one other one, but it was just kind of like Coke, life, appreciate it, blah, blah, blah. Nothing really funny to take home from there. But yeah, That's Pepsi, sad. since they sponsored like the halftime and everything, it was it was a kind of a bigger deal for them. Yeah, I was I remember Pepsi. And so I, was, <laughs> I just want to So I mean, I think maybe Pepsi owns maybe that company and they're trying to launch a new product, get into the mm-hmm. hard seltzer business, which I, I mean, I've been drinking these for a while, so I feel like I'm ahead of the curve with them, but you never know. Uh, there's so many out there. but Yeah, so if you if you hit up Superhero Slate, Dot com. Check out the show notes for this specific episode. Uh, I took notes during the game because it was, a very, it was a very boring game. So I just tried my best to keep track of any sort of notable commercials. I didn't include anything that was like a dramatic tribute to like uh, like armed forces. You know, it's not because there's anything wrong with that, but it's just like that's not what that's not what we want to talk about on the show. We don't. We're not looking for a dramatic commercial. We're looking for movie trailers, something funny and something goofy, mm-hmm. or just anything like particularly weird. So we got kind of a chronological list somewhat of these commercials up in our show notes. Uh, I think we're probably going to talk about a good chunk of them, but just in case we miss any and maybe you were watching the game like, oh, what was that weird commercial that I saw? I forgot who it was. I kind of got the name of the companies and a short little description of what was in the commercial in our show notes. And I think Chris is trying to hunt down like a playlist of these commercials no. somewhere. So if he can find one, he'll put that in the show notes. But of course, we got links to the big tra- the big actual movie trailers that came out in the show notes. But uh, Chris, are you, are you ready to jump into it? Or you got any like a well, bigger thought? I, I first I want to talk about our our in pre our game spreads here. We we always talk about food because we're foodies. <laughs> yeah. And how after you sent me a picture of yours, you realize everything you have is cheese based. Oh yeah, I was entirely cheese based. <laughs> I had uh, I had the the Rotel Velveeta dip. I had jalapeno poppers filled with cream cheese. We had cheese quesadillas. Uh, we had mozzarella sticks. Uh, my my wife uh, wanted to uh, eat some macaroni and cheese, so she made some of that on the side in a bowl. And um, we I see also, nacho cheese Doritos as well in this photo. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, that's true. Nacho cheese Doritos. So we we du- we we didn't just double triple. We like uh, septupled down on the cheese today. So I'm probably not going to have a, a BM for probably till you're listening to this podcast on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, I was going to say I was very <laughs> impressed with like for just two of you. I was like, this is this looks awesome. Like this looks like you just ordered appetizers at a TGI Fridays and you just we're going oh, yeah. to town at it. So. All about the apps, baby. Yeah. Uh, I do have to say, um, I, we had my in-laws over. They were running a little behind, but we ended up, um, as you can tell, my wife went all out with the the, suit, the football theme. Oh, yeah, I house. love that. She had a little tablecloth down and everything. Yeah, with like she made, she printed off, she had a couple of snow days off of school this week, so she made a little trophy and everything, so it was all Super Bowl themed. Her cookies, uh, again, are the field goal pulse with sprinkles representing the crowd. It was very nice, so I have to give her props for that. 
Um, but I have to tell you, I had my St. Elmo Steakhouse shrimp cocktail sauce. <laughs> my brother-in-law and sister-in-law were sitting there. We're all eating it coughing because it's so Ooh, spicy. Yeah, Isn't we that- talked – I think we briefly mentioned it on the show a couple of weeks ago when we started bringing up the idea of Super Bowl snacks. But mm. it's basically the most horseradish-packed cocktail sauce probably I've ever had on the planet. Mm. And you got it special ordered basically from a restaurant so you could have it in your home, own home. But yeah, that stuff's in – Tense. So <laughs> <laughs> it was. We were all coughing. Like, yep, this is clearing your sinuses out real quick. Yeah, it's weird because it's a weird sensation because it's spicy, but it's not traditional like pepper spice. It's like this whole other type of weird sensation. So yeah, mm. man, it's it, bizarre. And lastly, super fan Jim sent us his macho cheese dip. It was a typo, <laughs> but I'm calling it macho cheese dip. I ran to the store immediately after recording earlier, picked up the ingredients, ran home, and made it. And it was a highlight of the evening. So, yeah. uh, Super Fan Jim, thank you for that recipe. It's a big hit. Everybody loved it. Goes great with the corn chips. I had just going to recommend that in there. Uh, and if you guys want it, let us know. We'll post it or, or have him post it because it's definitely his recipe that um, it was, was really good. So, gonna all get, right, all right. To that. But now we're here for the big things. Um, I don't know when you started watching the Super Bowl, Mike. What time you uh, tuned in? About, about, about an hour ahead of time. Okay, cool. Because ours was on at like 3 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> and, uh-huh. uh, and it didn't start till 6.30. So it had been running a while. And I got to say, um, the first thing I saw actually was the Alita Battle Angel spot. Yeah, that, there was a little early. There was a little Alita there. I totally forgot about it until you added it to the notes uh, right up there at the top. Uh, so yeah, the James Cameron's shelling out his wallet a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So what I think, well, um, well Fox honestly kind of surprised me with this, um, but I mean, this one actually was probably the coolest trailer I saw. Like seeing all the CGI robots and all the people she's like going to be up against in more of uh-huh. a full body effect. The, I was talking earlier about how I'm not really sold on Alita. This one made me feel a little more comfortable. It's gonna be a I don't know how to feel about it, but I definitely have to watch it to get that experience. Like, um, mm-hmm. did you ever did you ever watch Speed Racer by the Wachowskis? No, but I've heard that movie was panned when it came out, and then all of a sudden people are like, "No, that was actually a really cool movie. Go back and watch it." So you yeah. need to check it out. Yeah, if you're if you're gonna watch Hancock, I'm gonna recommend you watch <laughs> watch that. Uh, so Alita Battle Angel was the first thing I noticed kicking off this evening. But once the once the actual coin was tossed, Mike, uh, we were treated to. The most silent moment I've ever had in my house in my life. Uh, <laughs> it snuck it snuck up on me like literally after the coin flipped. I looked over uh, to my wife and I said, all right, "All right, baby, here we go. Coin flip is done. We're about to get uh, into the trailers." And then as soon as I finished the word "trailers," uh, I see like cap pop up on my screen. It was the Avengers in game big game spot. And let That's me right. tell you, I have more questions than answers after Ooh. watching this. But this is a dark, m- moody, brooding spot oh, yeah. like what? as as much as i want more out of a trailer as much as i would love to see awesome action set pieces and everything i want to see this is exactly how they need to market this movie don't show me anything keep the tone dour but like hopeful and uh yeah i i don't want to see anymore this is like the best marketing that i've ever seen for this movie but uh, you picked up on something a really great in one of these shots and uh, I, I think you need to you need to let us know what you saw. Yeah. So uh, um, several, um, I guess, seconds into it, it's one of the night shots, and I'm like, well, which mm. one? There's several. The Avengers are coming outside of the Avengers facility. Uh, we have Black Widow, uh, Captain America, the Hulk, and uh, War Machine. But it, I mean, from a cinema, cinematographer's point of view, there goes one, two, three empty spot for a person and then war machine yeah it's a very awkward composition there is someone missing in this trailer mike and Mm -hmm. i don't know who it is they've been either edited out or they're completely cgi um i have three theories on this okay number one is it's vision but he's all grayed out and been brought back to life okay um it is either uh maybe um either uh captain marvel and they don't want to show us her in the trailers yet Mm mm-hmm or it's actually Tony Stark, and they're looking up to somebody else mm. to show that he's back on Earth. Yeah, because if you think about this team, and they're trying to make moves, you know, they're trying to get back at Thanos. They need somebody there with like 
intelligence expertise like not just like technology but that somebody that has experience with space because that's ultimately where they need to go now scott lang ant-man he you know he might understand like some quantum stuff being ant-man but like you, even knowing the quantum realm isn't necessarily going to get you to thanos so mm-hmm. somebody missing is going to know like the topology of space of how to get there so i think maybe that's what we're missing like vision would probably know that because he's like an all-knowing type of dude maybe nebula's there something yeah. something there's got to be a piece there yeah and i don't think it's ant-man because another shot later we see is ant-man and war machine flick their helmets on instantaneously Mm. and there is a shot of tony stark and nebula seem to be in a spaceship so we know that they're hooking up not that way but you know well yeah in a a teamwork time type of way and and and, um they they are on that planet at the end of infinity war together on um thanos's home world now, uh-huh. what was cool about that shot is it made me realize how much I miss and love Tony Stark when he's put down with nothing in his hands and he has to build his way out of uh-huh. a problem. And that shot is so reminiscent of the original Iron Man when he's in the cave building that uh-huh. reactor. And I'm like, I love this. I want to see. I want to see Tony Stark think and be intelligent and make his way out of this problem. I I really love the post-apocalyptic setting they set up at the beginning of the trailer where we got to see these like empty like stadiums and stuff like that because mm-hmm. a lot of the times in these comic books they always go like like literal literal in game stories where like the the planets being destroyed all of these what if scenarios kind of like Age of Ultron they showed like the future where everything's decimated so it's kind of cool we kind of get to see that kind of decimation in the future but ultimately I think somehow they're going to be able to reverse all this and go back to normal so it's kind of nice seeing these Avengers having to deal and grapple with like you know losing and literally the whole world has fallen apart yeah uh, the my my favorite shot uh, though is the end shot of this trailer with all the current living Avengers that we see at the end of Infinity War walking through the facility in a sunrise. So the sun uh, is coming yeah. up on them. Their backlit is, is washing over them. And, and sec- yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say the best contrast of seeing all these live action actors is just seeing Rocket Raccoon just like mixed in with the group like this this shorty kind of opening doors and he's like really small stature in that sunrise shot so oh man I can't wait to get me some more Rocket I've always loved Rocket he's my favorite member of the of the Guardians so give uh-huh. me some more of that and then uh, on that note the very close second is the first shot we see of a, of a clear mohawk Hawkeye bathed in red light in what seems to be some sort of alienish background mm-hmm. so I don't know where he is I don't know what he's doing but I'm excited to see Hawkeye um, return into the Avengers fold and, and as an original Avenger and, and see what he can do. So, yeah. And there was a really powerful shot where we see Cap getting his shield back. Yeah. Don't know exactly if he just kind of goes out and grabs it because he knows probably no one is left on Earth guarding it. But he straps it back on his arm. And uh, what what's the line that they say? I think you texted it to me right after the trailer. Oh, um, um, was it? I, I have it literally here in my notes. I'm going to scroll up. Uh, da, 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 da. No, hold on. Waiting. Sorry. Sorry. I'm it's killing like, the, I'm what is the it, moment what, here. What is it like we don't give up or we we don't stop or it's all, it's up to us or something like that? I don't really remember what he says, but it's paired with that shot where he's pulling that buckle down, attaching the shield yeah. to his arm, and oh, man, it was beautiful. It, it really is. Um, what What is interesting about that is if you look Captain America's fingernail, his hands are dirty, and he's kind of like hesitates a little bit. So this may be, a lot of people are saying Captain America is going to sacrifice himself in this movie. This may be a big lead up to that or or throwing us off one of the two. Um, did you also notice the intro uh, was all the lost scenes from all the, the decimated heroes from the from the last movie? They were all black and white and then red on some of them. So it was like uh, Spider-Man, oh, Black yeah, Panther. Oh, yeah, when they were when they're flipping through that opening. Yeah, yeah so like you, you know you know who's dead. Like, they, they let you know. So <laughs> it's a very dour-feeling tv spot and i'm very excited to see where this goes and how this marketing ramps ramps up or doesn't at all one of the two mm-hmm. it's gonna either like we're gonna get one more trailer that adds even more questions kevin feige where do i send my self-addressed stamped envelope to send you my money and you send me my tickets i don't want to wait to buy them can i just send you the money give me an address mm-hmm. yeah um uh, yeah whatever he can do mike mike's lives right down the road i'll come to him i'll pay i'll buy plane <laughs> tickets to get over there you don't have yeah. to go to one place so um very excited very hot opening for this Super Bowl man like that was that was a that was how you open this and um, it was all downhill it was that. all downhill from there <laughs> I mean there, there's some there's some interesting bits and I think some kind of st- 
a one or two standout funny commercials, but uh, that was the highlight for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I I know this Walmart commercial uh, that was next had been out before, but I've never watched it. Mm. Um, we get to see all these uh, famous movie vehicles uh, take, take the bat- place. The Batmobile is the first thing you see in the commercial, so I was just like, oh, what am I watching right now? The, and then the I saw Dark Pulp. Knight Batmobile, by yeah. the way. The, ran- the Rambler, Rumbler. Yeah, and then I got to see the Shaggin Wagon from Dumb and Dumber, um, the DeLorean. What else is in there? Scooby-Doo, the mystery uh, machine. Bumblebee shows up to – he transforms into a car to receive the groceries, and he transforms back to walk away with the groceries. That's Transformers <laughs> logic for you, Mike. I don't know, which, yeah, I don't know what more you want. Yeah, uh, Knight Rider was in there. So there's a bunch of famous – I thought that was really cool. Um just just to see all those cars like that i mean you don't really think about movie cars being that iconic at the end of the day but i thought that was really really an interesting thing i was mm. hoping doc was gonna get out of the delorean after it landed because i was like oh my <laughs> god get christopher lloyd to come out as doc again um that'd be really cool uh what about the hyundai jason bateman commercial yeah uh, this one i thought this one had a very interesting premise at least out of a lot of these commercials that were uh, airing tonight this one i think was the most clever where it was just like uh, he was in an elevator, he was chauffeuring people down. Basically, the further you go down, the awful things get, like going to the DMV or getting like a root canal. And at the very, very, very bottom was like buying a car, which I totally agree with what an awful experience it is to buy a car. So I don't know if this weird Hyundai app is actually going to help you seamlessly buy a car or not, but I, I at least enjoyed the premise of it. So I'll, mm-hmm. I'll give it points for the premise. Yeah, I, I, I do as well. Like, I'm like, okay, this is fun. And then... Uh, what what website was even there's a, the Hyundai.com or something like that? Some sort of app or something. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, that's really that's really weird. So I I mean either way, I remember I'm like oh Jason Bateman. This is either gonna be really good or really bad. He, he it's gonna go either way. So that was cool. Right after that, um, the second quietest moment in my house was the Captain Marvel big game spot that they came through, and we gotta hear uh, her phrase several times. Mike, you remember what that phrase was? Uh, what is it like? Uh, uh, something get down, get up, uh, something <laughs> ride, ride the horse. Uh, I don't no, know. <laughs> higher, faster, farther. Oh yeah, she said that like five yeah, times. Yeah, that's what she's. That's, I think that's her. Whenever she was on Earth as a pilot, that was like her motto. With uh, uh, was it Monica Rambo? Her little her. Uh, I guess her goose there. I guess or her wingman. <laughs> um, and um, she kept saying that over and over. I, it didn't really give. Us, it gave us like a bunch of action shots, not a whole story. Not a lot of um, Cree, sadly, but I did enjoy her punching that spaceship to bits when, at the yeah. end there. So I think there was maybe like one kind of new uh, uh, CG set piece, uh, maybe towards the end of it, where it looked like she was flying and blasting, but instead of like in the atmosphere, it looked like maybe it was like during the day, like just in the sky. So really not much new there, but the movie's so close to coming out. We, you know, there's really not much left to reveal, you know, it's just a reminder. Hey, Captain Marvel tickets are now on sale. So, um, my wife is really excited. She's actually trying to find Captain Marvel merchandise to wear. She's like really, really excited about this. So, Oh, that's rad. That's uh, I think, I think that's really cool. She's really on board Captain Marvel. So, um, big win for me in this house. Uh, now we get a, the start of the Bud Light commercials. I believe <laughs> yes. there's several on this list, as they always do. Um, I, I got to give them credit for not doing the Clydesdales right off the bat and, and going with this whole um, medieval times kind of setting for the rest yeah, of Yeah, I think this one was carried over from last year. They kind of, I think last year is when they introduced the Bud Light night, possibly. I'm not 100% sure, but... Yeah, this one kicked it off with the whole idea of making beer with corn syrup, which I don't really know if we're supposed to care whether this alcohol you're consuming that's, you know, destroying your liver anyway should have or shouldn't have corn syrup. But I thought it was kind of funny that Bud Light's like, what's something that's not in our beer that's just in our other competitor's beer? Uh, uh, I don't know, corn syrup? All right, let's just rail on rail on them for the corn syrup. No one's going to – no one's going to – so I thought that was – Yeah. I thought that was pretty clever. Pet foods do this a lot, like – our ingredients are better than the other pet foods ingredients. We have corn gluten meal, or, or they don't. Or I don't know, but they they really they really drove it home. <laughs> like that was a, the the thread here. But that was really cool. Um, the bud was it the bud knight is what he was. Um, very interesting. And I'm gonna follow up with this one here in a second because yes. <laughs> um, it, I think it's it's really cool. Uh, the Hobbs and Shaw teaser. I think this is a cut down version of the trailer showed up. Yeah, it was. Um, like we talked about it earlier in the show, I'm very on board with this movie. I'm, I'm very on board. I was talking with my in I'm like, I don't watch this, but look at this. Watch how crazy this looks. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm going to watch it. So um, I think I think that was really cool. I didn't catch 
the Expensify commercial because I was getting my plate of food during this one. So can you – is this worth talking about or is it skipper? <laughs> this, this one was just kind of weird because like uh, 2 Chains is in some sort of like uh, car and then uh, uh, Adam Scott shows up uh, kind of playing an accountant. And he's like, yo, dude, you're spending like way too much money. Do you have like any receipts for this? And he says something like, oh, I don't have receipts or I use Expensify or whatever. And then – I don't know what else Adam Scott says, um, who is also, if you're not sure, uh, Ben Wyatt from Parks and Rec, who is an accountant in that show. So I think he was vibing off of that role. But the only reason I put it on here is because 2 Chains responds to him at the very end of the commercial by just making the noise, skirt, which <laughs> I, thought, I thought was like kind of funny. Like it, it just doesn't make any sense. So I was like, all right, that's enough for me to put Expensify in the show notes. So uh, good job whoever made that commercial for adding that one silly little noise because that was enough for me to talk about it for 10 seconds. Oh, man. It's like yeet, man. I've, I've been saying yeet ironically so much i can no longer get it out of my system Mm -hmm. um this is probably these next two we're going to talk about are probably two of my favorite ones of the night oh Uh, really (laughs) yes steve carell being the pepsi spokesman was was hilarious uh in this i'm asking is is pepsi okay like i thought he was a coke commercial at first i thought it was going to go the other way and then he's Uh like yes pepsi's okay well some ladies ordering pepsi in in the restaurant and who else comes in was that cardi b that comes in and and sweeps into the table with the booth with the lady it's it's cardi b and little john uh saying okay or yeah because they they did this to kick off the the halftime show too yeah, because he's like, oh, I need a, I need a catchphrase too. So yeah, uh, so um, seeing little John do his two words that he that he yells was, <laughs> and, and his, his, he's famous for two letters that just happens to be in a in a common Coca Cola internet meme, which is Pepsi. Okay, it's like no, it's not. The whole time I was watching the commercial, no, Pepsi is not okay. You're in Atlanta. You're gonna drink Coca Cola. Yeah, and and is Pepsi okay? He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, this is good. This is gonna be good. <laughs> so uh, I was very entertained with this and and the lineup of the, the obscure celebrities and that like opposite oh. ends there but uh oh not 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 this one it was the it's the one after so um super fan jim he's been he, he was giving me a run at, the audi near-death experience was his one of his favorite commercials um of the night um because even my in-laws were very impressed with the electronic or the electric audi car yeah i thought the coolest bit of the commercial was they said a third of their fleet is going to be electric in 2025, By 2025 I think. yeah so i thought that was pretty cool and worth noting and it, it was somewhat humorous i mean we didn't have a whole lot of funny commercials tonight so i was like oh i gotta throw in what i think is somewhat interesting yeah, no, I mean, I, th- I think the, the car was cool. I just wish it didn't say e-tron on the front of it because then mm-hmm. I feel like a nerd. But um, but the next one, the Bud Light sequel, number two, that you're like, okay, he's going to, you know, he's like, I'm going to go uh, tap this keg. And I thought he was going to joust a keg open. You know, I'm like, oh, that's what he's going to do. And then it turns into the mountain from Game of Thrones crushing yeah. his skull in. And then you're like, <laughs> oh, my God, what happened? And then the dragon comes in and it's all on fire. And I'm like, this went dark. This yeah, was real dark, real fast. And uh, it was one of those weird experiences where it's just like you had to experience the commercial and slowly you start to realize these aren't just like unlicensed Game of Thrones cameos because anyone can technically hire the actor that's the mountain and put mm-hmm. him in similar looking armor. But then when I saw the dragon show up, I was like, oh, no, this is a collab for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and then it's like Bud Light, like it starts off Bud Light. And it's like, like Game, Game of Thrones brought to you by a Bud Light. It's like Game of Thrones coming in April. And you're like, oh. Oh, son of a gun. Like, they, they yeah. went all out. They, this they, was the best commercial of the night. Definitely vibing off the Tide ad from last yeah. year, for sure. Definitely. Uh, I talk, I had lunch with my brother yesterday. And I didn't mention this. Uh, he went to um, Europe for about three weeks uh, in December with his wife. The When he was in, I think, in Bruges, the, as it out, across the street, they had a um, life-size replica of the mountain's um, helmet in the oh. window shop. And he, like, it took everything... I had not to buy that every day. He <laughs> walked out of there. He said so. I thought that was really cool. But yeah, yeah. like that. That to me, this was like the best one because I didn't see it coming. I thought Ooh. it was going to be another Bud Knight ad, and then it was like, oh nope, it's Game of Thrones ad. Yeah, like, I I liked it because I leaned over uh, to my wife and I said, "Can you imagine how how." desperate Bud Light wanted to team up with Game of Thrones that they allowed all of their characters to be murdered on screen <laughs> by a dragon and the mountain <laughs> to just just prove how awesome Game of Thrones is they just wanted that they wanted that team up so I I appreciate the dedication that they went all the way there yeah I definitely agree uh, Pringles had a smart speaker ad and this is not the first smart speaker ad I saw today there was another one before the game the like, smart speakers are blase now everybody's got them everybody's talking to them and, and there's like three smart speakers talking to each other um, mm. 
But this one was funny because he's like, the smart speaker's like, oh, I can never taste Pringles because I don't have a mouth and I can't. And he's like, hey, hey, smart speaker, play uh, whatever that fun- play funky, funky town. Music. Yeah, funky yeah. town, like right yeah, in the middle like, of it. The existential dread of being an AI bot. So I, yeah, I got, I gave that points for being humorous. <laughs> that was that was a giggle. That was a giggle moment out, out mm-hmm. of nowhere. So um, they didn't they didn't lean in that too much. Oh, I don't want to talk about the chunky milk. <laughs> Mint Mobile. I don't know what Mint Mobile is, but they came up with the idea of uh, chunky milk, which I don't even remember the premise of the commercial, but it was hilarious watching people drink and chew milk because we were just like, oh, oh this is gross. So uh, Mint Mobile, I don't know what you are, but that chunky milk was visceral. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That sounds so, so <laughs> gross. It was not good. I was like, watch it. I'm like cringing the whole way through. I'm like, please, mm-hmm. please don't do this. And then they did. Uh, so yeah, kudos Mint Mobile for for making us cringe, uh, and all all night cringe cringe most cringeworthy commercial award right there, Mike. I'll give you that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Jordan Peele is hosting the new Twilight Zone series uh, mm-hmm. coming up. Um, CBS and, is it is it a CBS or a CBS All Access show? I didn't quite remember what. I think they it's said. All Access. I think probably it, that seems like a premium content. Yeah, and um, you know uh, if you like Star Trek Discovery, which I hear a lot of people are loving that show. Um, this might be another reason to get on board uh, with the Twilight Zone. Uh, do you, I th- I feel I get a lot of uh, what's that called Black Mirror vibes from this. Like yeah, I I mean I don't I haven't seen a, a a lot of Black Mirror, but from what I've seen, it seems to be very technology based. Where Twilight Zone is kind of like almost anything goes. So and and it's the OG, but this one was a little bit of a letdown because it started with like this glitch effect where you thought you were coming back to the Super Bowl, but then it starts like glitching out, and I was like, oh man, what are we about to get? This is crazy. Everything's glitching. Is this is gonna be a crazy movie trailer. It's like oh no, it's. Twilight Zone. I was like, oh, okay, well, whatever. Uh, And I'll segue real quick into the fact that, uh, speaking of CBS All Access, I signed up for their week free trial so I could watch the Super Bowl. And the stupid service buffered just before halftime on my PlayStation 4. So I I rage quit it, and then I whipped open my computer that's plugged into my TV, and I just opened up the CBS Sports website, and I streamed it fine for the rest of it. So, I mean, more than likely, I probably wasn't going to continue on past the trial, but I'm definitely not going to now. If you, you It's 2019. Everybody's streaming. I will not put up with any buffering anymore. And I checked my internet speed. I was getting like 120 20 down there is nothing there is nothing stopping that from getting to my tv so okay that's my rant oh, <laughs> next yeah. weird weird ass commercial please yeah ne- <laughs> yeah which one is the, oh the robo shot so the robo child had been on i think before the game as well so this was like a sequel to the original robo child ad and i am not feeling the robo child <laughs> this like, this was a weird commercial but not the weirdest uh yeah it was just this weird ch- robo child that didn't know how to cry so it laughed instead so that was creepy yeah it didn't know it like yeah no robo child you can't be a, a cpa because you're not a real person uh and it's like turbo saying they have real cpas on call now so when you go to their website rather than just robots so uh yeah that was i get the premise but man that was some weird execution <laughs> yeah um, then we got to see, uh, probably the most cleavage of all the commercials, uh, tied in with the most, uh, I guess the highest person in all the commercials. Um, was it Sarah Jessica Parker opened up the Stella, uh, our mm-hmm. toys ad <laughs> followed by Jeff Bridges playing the dude, uh, in this and then, or he's like, I'll have one Stella, our toys. And yeah, you you were you were right in our normal news episode. This was going to be a beer commercial with the dude, and you're right. Um, now is was that the the most interesting man in the world? Also in this, trailer? it was. Yeah, they 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 were able to, I guess, peel him off of Dozeke. So yeah, uh, so it was a, it was pretty fun to see see him as the dude. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's uh, it, yeah, it was just nostalgia for a minute. I think Sex in the City uh, may have been the first half, but I, I yeah, didn't, yeah, there something. was like they were playing that kind of like music from the show and stuff, and oh, she mm-hmm. doesn't want a Cosmo. I was like, nobody's order like legitimately ordering a Stella at a fancy bar like that. Sorry, Stella. <laughs> and, and and dude Lebowski is not going into a bar like that to get a drink either. So yeah, uh, it, yeah, either way, but it was funny, and, and he did say our our to- our toys. So I, I yeah. laughed. Uh, the new one. So the rock has a show on TV and looks like LeBron James is getting a game show, a live game show Uh on TV called the million dollar mile where you run against a professional runner and and try to win it. 
to get a yeah, million not, dollars? Yeah, I, I think the premise was it's basically a mile long obstacle course, which kind of grabbed me just because I feel like if an obstacle course is a mile long, there's going to be lots of interesting obstacles. So that kind of hooked me and I was like, oh, I guess uh, LeBron James adds some credibility to it. So I, I just thought the premise was kind of clever. So I wrote it down. I'll, I don't know if I'll ever watch it, but you know, I like Ninja Warrior. So this just kind of seemed like a more extreme Ninja Warrior. So I'm like, all right, let, let's see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. I mean, they, they they didn't show a whole lot, but I mean, it might be something to, to put on in the background if you need something to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, the five dollar Abe Lincoln, they've been running those for a while in Pizza Hut. So, well, it's new to me because right. <laughs> my first dive in the Super Bowl. But yeah, that one was kind of like uh, uh, dropped in uh, throughout the Super Bowl. I thought it was, you know, it kind of started to. I warmed up to it a little bit throughout the game since the game was so boring to begin with. So I was like, all right, Abe, I'll throw you in the show notes. You 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 got to chuckle out of me. Yeah, yeah. Um, they they're they're probably gonna play it for a while. The the five dollar aid thing. I think they're gonna run those ads for for a little bit. Um, then the we get, we got into the um, Super Bowl sponsored commercials. It looks like. Yeah, I don't know what the NFL 100 is, Chris. Do you know what it is? Yeah, it's, it's, a cent, it's a centennial for the the NFL. This is like 100 uh, years of the. NFL. I thought it was like I thought they were trying to advertise like a streaming service or something. Like, what is NFL 100? Is this an app? What is this? No, it's 100 year the, the the centennial of the, the the NFL. I believe is what it is. And um, so they got a bunch of famous people who I maybe knew four of them, <laughs> and they all played keep away with a football off a cake. And I was like, I looked over to my my. My wife, I'm like, they really need to put subtitles of who's on what screen (laughs) while this is going on because I have no idea. Yeah, I had a feeling there was some hot, hardcore sports fan that got a big kick out of that because some guy was just like, nope, I'm not throwing it to you over there, Miami. And I was like, I don't get this reference at all. He does not like that man from Miami, so I'll just continue. But it was kind of, it was kind of fun. You know, someone fell into a cake, so good for them. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say, what, what was with Ninja, the video game player, it's like starting oh, yeah. in the commercial? Like, what, thought, what did he I, do? I thought that was going to be more like pertinent or important. But yeah, he like delivered somebody a drink. So I don't know if they just wanted... I, did, I mean, Ninja probably has a bunch of followers. Maybe they just wanted him to, like, retweet it to tell people to tune into the Super Bowl. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just – and then there was a girl at the end. Who was the girl football player? Well, they actually had, like, a commercial uh, during the Super Bowl. It was, like, another car commercial where some uh, some uh, girl was making it into – I don't know if it was, like, college football or maybe even pro football. I don't keep up with football. But I think there's, like, this trend where women are finally starting to break into pro um, pro football. So I think that's kind of what it was. If that's the case, that's pretty freaking cool. But, yeah, I didn't know who she was. Yeah. Um, so I would have showed I had some names. But it's cool to get all those famous people in there. That was, like, the fifth um, – uh, Peyton Manning commercial of the day. He 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 had the original Super Bowl with uh, who was it? Uh, John Malkovich at the start oh, of the game. Oh yeah, in the in the in the pregame show that was yeah. interesting. Yeah. So yep. But what about SpongeBob SquarePants Ooh, making yes. his, his debut at the halftime show due to an online petition, <laughs> and apparently Man. thanks to Travis Scott, not Maroon Five, who got him in here. Um, yeah, you, you can't you can't make anybody happy here because they easily could have not put SpongeBob in there. No one really would have complained. They would have got it, you know. Uh, but they but they put him in there, and I you know I appreciated it. They didn't actually do the song, but you got to remember there could be a million reasons why that song couldn't be aired live on television and performed. Maybe they didn't have the rights to it. Maybe you know they didn't want to pay that much just for a little SpongeBob cameo. But just the fact that like I saw like Squidward and SpongeBob during the halftime show, I was like, all right, I'm on board. Board. So and you know it's it's a nice little um, it's a nice little kind of uh, rest in peace uh, to the creator of SpongeBob that passed away you know last year. So I I appreciated the sentiment. It did, I didn't have to see the song. Yeah, I, I didn't either. I was hoping to hear "I Want to Rock" and then they they kicked into that in the Super mm-hmm. Bowl from that. But I mean, um, it, it just goes to show you the power of the internet. You can you can almost get anything you want if you rally behind a cause big enough on mm-hmm. on Reddit, um, and and go from there. Uh, so halftime show kind of okay. I actually did notice you, you wrote the notes the Chinese lantern drones. Um, a lot of people had lantern Chinese lanterns in their hand. They'd written stuff on, and um, 
in the air they were kind of floating around and like I'm like they're not going anywhere so they yeah. they must well, be robots of some kind. Yeah, my my wife made a point to me to say like, you know, that's not environmentally friendly. You shouldn't be sending ch- Chinese lanterns into the sky cuz it's just you're releasing a floating litter that's going to come down later. And then we started watching I was like, "Wait a minute, they're not going anywhere. Are they drones?" And then they started forming words. So I was like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're probably drones if they're literally forming words." <laughs> So that that was kind of cool though because when we were watching it, I was I was saying like, oh, I'm I'm looking forward to the big technology set piece. There's always something big and wowing in these. I think last year they did drones and I, they just did the same trick again, but at least they kind of improved it a little bit with lanterns. So you know that was cool. I, I did say I did say when they do the live action version of the Tangled movie, this will be probably be used very heavily. In, in that for those uh, the, the Chinese lanterns they do I think I think Disney Parks needs to get up on these these lanterns that would be a really cool like evening uh, thing to put on like mm-hmm. when they do their big spectacles at the end of the night uh, so get up on that Disney yeah I don't know if you saw our picture me uh, me and my wife had a picture with one of the lightning or one of those cubes this uh-huh. year which is a newer thing they do it at dusk and um, they uh, I found out those boxes cost like five thousand dollars a piece. Woo! Yeah, and it's just like an LED <laughs> box, so I, I don't know how they do it, but anyway. Uh, halftime, uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, I also saw this. Netflix, their viewership is down 30 32% compared to a typical Sunday because of the Super Bowl. Yeah, anytime Netflix releases a stat about literally anything, it's news because you never get info. So uh, it's nice that they're kind of being tongue-in-cheek about it. Like, yeah, we know you're not going to be watching Netflix tonight, so we'll let you know how much you're really not watching it. So 32%. Like, I think I saw there Nielsen released, like, a list – uh, oh, like back in like December or maybe early January of like the most watched television and broadcast things like last year in 2018 and the Super Bowl is the number one spot so it's not surprising it's probably the same thing this year too. Mm-hmm. Do you think um, do you think Pornhub's gonna put out their their viewership for <laughs> that? They should. That would be pretty funny. They they usually do that in, in tongue in cheek as well against you know whatever other thirty like when Netflix doesn't they do it against them. Chris, I think you mean tongues and cheeks. Oh yeah, but... that one. Sorry, that's that's probably a category on there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's yeah Netflix of course. Um, but they they didn't do a, a new release ep- episode or show this year. Someone else did. Why not talk yeah, about that's that? yeah. Um, a, a commercial I laughed more than I possibly should have at is the bubbly commercial the carbonated sugar-free drink uh with michael buble um correcting people and then signing all the cans or fixing all the cans with his name on it mm-hmm. this was childish humor and i laughed more than i should have but i thought it was funny so i don't know what to say about that um netflix is this is our planet a new show or an old show repurposed for netflix uh I mean, they seem to make a big deal out of it. And I feel like if you buy a Super Bowl spot, it's got to be somewhat relevant and new. So, yeah, I think Our Planet is their version of, like, uh, what's it called? Planet Life Earth. or Planet Earth. Uh, but, yeah, no, I think it's new because I think they said it's, like, coming out in April okay, or something. Okay, yeah, so I just I – just, um, Our Planet is from the creator of Planet Earth, which stars David Attenborough. And mm. it's pretty much the same thing as Planet Earth, but their, their version of it with David Attenborough. So, um, sounds like uh, sounds like a, a pretty big win for Netflix, I guess. This is kind of broadening their their horizons. I mean, after the the Fire Festival documentary, they're going to need something else to put up there. <laughs> uh, Amazon, though, coming in with the TV show Hannah, the first episode streaming on Amazon Prime for the next twenty four hours. This uh, is weird because um, if you don't remember, a film actually came out yeah. in two thousand eleven called Hannah. That I actually watched. I don't really remember it that much. It, it, there were some entertaining moments in it because it was almost kind of like Jason Bourne, but like with a little girl. Uh, so there were some interesting like kick butt moments in it. But I'm honestly shocked it's being turned into a series on Amazon. Like it's not like it was a very prolific movie. And then I just googled while we were chatting if it, if it was based on a book, and I didn't really dive deep or anything. But I don't think Hannah is based on any sort of pre-existing ip so i'm like who pitched this to amazon how are they turning it into a series like so yeah i don't know what the market is there for hannah but i guess you can go watch the first episode for the next 24 hours yeah so someone is like oh this must be a new thing and i'm like i think it's um uh starring um the movie was starting the saoirse ronan one and i'm like oh yep that's what it was so uh, i was on the same boat as you i'm like this was a movie first and i don't i don't know why either unless it's just like hey you know, what's some movies that did mediocre that we could adapt into into this. So um, 
first episode streaming for 24 hours and then you'll never see that first episode again it's going away no i'm kidding uh, whenever they decide to release the whole show it sounds like you'll be able to catch that <clears throat> so yeah we'll, we'll catch that uh another bud light set in the the, the medieval times with the reverse bowl cut <laughs> that's what i said it was and then uh uh the wife looks at me and she's like no it's just the monk haircut and i was like i'm gonna leave it as a reverse bowl cut because that's what it looks like to me <laughs> well there's still a bowl it's just a bowl minus the bottom so yeah it was really i don't yeah that or is it the, or is it the top of the bowl because they turn it upside down oh, who knows oh no Oh, no. Yeah, but I think that I think that was another corn syrup type thing. Uh, yeah, because so. they were like, "Oh, they that beer has corn syrup in it." Well, they're getting a haircut. I was like, "Whatever." Uh, the most emotional commercial, probably the most tug at your heartstrings here, is the Xbox Adaptive Controller, which has been out Ooh. for about a week now. I think. Yeah, you can go watch the full, I think, like three minute version of it online, and man, it's 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 emotional. Like this was the one emotional commercial that I think was worth putting into our show notes. So go watch it. It's just. It's cool watching these kids finally able like to play games, and it's cool that Xbox like is going all out with this controller. I think PlayStation needs to make one now too. So, because um, you could probably use this Xbox one on a PC as well. So, PlayStation Switch, get up on it. Kids yeah. want to play games. What's really cool about the adaptive controller is it's just like a little square pad with like two little touch things that you can program to be whatever buttons you want or do whatever, and then you plug in more attachments like the feet pedals and all the other things for for playing. So whatever you need for for whatever um whoever's disability might be they they, this thing works and yeah um it's just it's really cool xbox (coughs) is doing that so hopefully they can get that into some other game consoles as well yeah totally rad uh bud light with a trojan horse i think this was the last one of the evening for them it was kind of the the worst one too i didn't really get what the joke was like oh we hear you talking in there that was the joke (laughs) yeah but this one in the bowl cut were really bottom of the barrel so to speak like mm. um just they were they had the 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 era set and they just wanted to go with it and i was like okay that corn syrup we get it we get it you don't use corn syrup so <laughs> um there you go uh i'd agree with this next one burger king looks like some archive footage of andy warhol eating what appears to be a very plain whopper yes he just wrapped in pa- and ra- check ketchup. <laughs> Wrap, wrapped in paper and then also put in a box <laughs> yeah so um why, why is the Whopper plain, and um, why is he dipping it in ketchup, and then why do they say, eat like Andy? I'm like, yeah. this is the exact opposite of what I want to do right <laughs> I now. I didn't realize it was Andy Warhol until that hashtag popped up, and I was like, Andy, Andy. I was like, weird haircut, white hair, archival footage. Oh, this is probably Andy Warhol. Yep, yeah. and it was. I, I saw him right away. I'm like, this is Andy Warhol. What kind of pop art thing is this doing? I'm like, I can't even believe they had this footage and they've been sitting on it for so long. <laughs> yeah, we need answers. There's got to be like a blog article out there that explains the history of that footage. Maybe that's the most important part, but it was just weird because it was just a locked camera down on Andy eating a burger. So, well, yep, uh, Reader's well, Commercial Award. Well, what was also interesting is like it was very much like just a live take on it because he's like, the ketchup won't come out. Like he's like having problems with the ketchup. And I'm like, mm-hmm. it, who who is this playing? Um what is what is going on? Um, but apparently, this is um, if I remember correctly, this is from a movie in like the eighties called like something about scenes in America. Okay, <laughs> and this is from that that movie. Weird. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but I don't know why the Whopper is playing. It's bothering me. That's, that's, that's <laughs> really eating me up. Um, the Alexa commercial came late in the late in the evening. Um, so especially. the funny thing about this Alexa commercial is you'll notice it it went up after the first touchdown of the game because they probably thought like, oh yeah, we got to get that first commercial that's right after the first touchdown. Everyone's going to be celebrating. I don't think they realized the first touchdown was going to come fourth quarter, almost at the end of the game, because there was definitely a reason that it was attached to that. So I thought that was funny. Yeah, I did too. So this was like, hey, we tried to put Alexa in different products and not all of them are winners. Mm-hmm. So they had Forrest Whitaker um, brushing with a speaker in in his uh, toothbrush. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harrison Ford's dog had a collar that translated for him and ordered things when it barked. Do- dog food and gravy. <laughs> dog food, gravy. <laughs> it kept coming back too uh, at the end of it. Uh, was it the um, the showrunners for, was it... Um, Broad Can't, City, yeah, yeah. Broad City, they they got blown up out of the speaker that was in the hot tub, mm-hmm. and then lastly, the uh, like we said, the NASA twins uh, were turning off the power to the. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, not not real out of the ballpark, but it was good to see Harrison Ford for a little bit. Um, scary stories to tell in the dark. I people were asking me if we're going to see trailers. I actually saw two before the the, the Super Bowl for this, and then um, 
another one later what is yeah this? i've I, I've never I've never read scary stories to tell in the dark, but I think it's a popular kind of children's spooky story. I don't really know the format. I don't know if there's like illustrations that go along with it. I, I distinctly remember the cover of the book because I've seen the cover cover a lot of the book in libraries growing up as a kid. But yeah, this one isn't like isn't nostalgically connected to me. But I, I imagine a lot of people were kind of hyped to see that. Yeah, some sort of girl with like a hair coming out of her cheek. So I think that means something. Oh. So it's probably like an original story. That hair. I don't know. I think it was a spider into, leg man oh maybe oh god that yeah that could be but did you catch what streaming service that was on was that like an amazon prime or a hulu thing i don't i don't remember what that was i don't remember um or maybe it was a no it was a movie i think i think uh, it was a movie i think it's you said well it said del toro was a producer so i thought i think so too um just pulling up real quick here it, apparently it is a, a film uh from cbs um uh, and this this directed by Andre Overdahl. I don't know who that is. And it's coming out later this year. All right. August. Well, there, so, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what's going on with it. And uh, I don't like watching scary things. So count me out. <laughs> <laughs> Michelob Ultra Organic. I missed half of this commercial. Oh, and- good. Because I deem it the worst commercial I've ever seen in my whole life. And easily the worst commercial of of the Super Bowl, just some person in a field in front of two microphones, uh, um, by audio, uh, microphones, I'm sure one's supposed to be the left ear. One's supposed to be the right ear. I don't know who she is. She very well could be. Was, that Zo- was it Zoe Kravitz? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would assume that's Lenny Kravitz's daughter, sister. No, uh, Lenny Kravitz's I, I daughter. She's in. She's okay. In. Uh, but yeah, it could have been her, but she's just doing ASMR. Uh, into speakers i'm just like oh no leave asmr on a on the deep uh back wallflower of youtube i don't need to see it that in a commercial so and also like Michelob ultra organic come on this is alcohol you're putting in your body it's not good for you any way you cut it you know feel free to drink it all you want but who gives a shit if your beer is organic that's the thing that was driving me crazy not only is it a dumb product but it's a weird commercial and i hate it chris i hate it and i'm definitely Definitely never drinking Michelob Ultra, even though I don't. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna double down and I'm gonna try to stop other people from drinking it too. Awful commercial. I hated it. Yeah, it was Zoe Kravitz. Uh, I I caught the end of it. I'm like, why is she whispering in in a field? What's going on here? And then I was like, I'm not even gonna give it the time of day. So I'm glad you tortured through it for me. <laughs> uh, and lastly, post game, post game, mm. probably because this was supposed to happen during some other maybe other touchdown or something else i don't know why this was delayed till the end of the game because we got a spot like what first quarter it was like super bowl 53 brought to you by toy story 4 then the trailer happened at the end of the night like Mm -hmm. the very last thing after the show so we got a toy story 4 teaser which shows uh it looks like buzz lightyear has been captured at some sort of carnival fair as a prize Mm -hmm. uh, who's being kicked in the face by key and peele's characters which yeah, is, the 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 arcade stuffed animals. Yeah, and so I I don't. It's a little more story, but not as much as I wanted, Mike. Um, yeah, I didn't catch a whole lot of this because honestly, I had turned the volume down on my TV to like half that it was during the game, and I was typing up notes for our podcast here. So I just kind of had to like lean over and look at the TV. I was like, "What? Wait, this is Toy Story. Okay, I got to add this to the notes. What are they saying?" Uh, and I was, then once I kind of got into it, I was like, "Okay, this isn't actually a real trailer. This is just kind of like a weird snippet of the movie." So yeah, I don't I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I, I mean, um, that's what I got in that uh, Bo Peep showed up at the beginning, just like mm-hmm. I said to you would. Yeah, so, you're you were on the Bo Peep train there. Yeah, that's yeah, that's our that's our Super Bowl rundown, Mike. I don't know what to yeah. make. heads or yeah, tails. I, this. this game was the worst game I've seen in a long time, and and reaffirm yeah. the fact I don't watch sports balls. Yeah. So I, to recap from the episode before, we didn't get an Aladdin, we didn't get Dumbo, uh, no Dark Phoenix, no Spider Man, uh, but we knew that. No Shazam, we knew that. Um, no Tider Hellboy, uh, huh. and also I was hoping for Star Wars, but kind of once we ended the first two commercial breaks, I knew we weren't going to get any Star Wars because that would have been top of the show for sure. So um, uh, unfortunately, we also didn't get any Disney. Stream 
streaming service announcements. I thought that could have possibly been a commercial too. So, uh, womp, womp, the game was boring. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and not watch commercial television again until probably the Oscars at the end of the month. And then after that, uh, probably not going to do it again until like maybe the next Super Bowl. So I'll stick to my streaming services, not CBS All Access, because you got to get your shit together. Um, but yep, that that's that's sports for me for this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, it's really about it. I mean, I take it back. Uh, the March Madness might might interest me a little bit. I think it might be more work related though, rather than actual pleasure. Oh so, yeah, if you can get into a pool, yeah, that might help out. Yeah. So, um, but I think I think that might be it. This yeah. this is where this is where sports in and Comic Con begins, Mike. So uh, it's time to start ramping up for those. Mm-hmm. But um, other than that. Um, kind of didn't get a lot of what we expected and uh but we did what we did the few trailers we did get pretty pretty good i will make one more prediction now that the super bowl is finally wrapped up everybody has spent all of their money uh, advertising in between this very very boring game now that the super bowl is out of the way i bet we're gonna get some sort of trailer this week because they're like anything that we premiere after the super bowl is gonna feel like a discount because we didn't have to pay all that money up front so maybe we'll finally get that shazam commercial like our new shazam trailer maybe on like tuesday or something like that so crossing my fingers that we'll have something to talk about next week on the show trailer wise yeah i'm i'm, I'm pulling for a hellboy i'm pulling for a hellboy yeah next week. Hellboy, it's that not mean, a tight ad. It's Hellboy. Exactly. See, that's so. It would have been so brilliant, man. Call me Tide. You want me there or <laughs> legendary? I guess whoever made a Hellboy. So, uh, yeah. Either way. But Mike, people want to know what you're up to during the week when you're not watching the Super Bowl and making all those cheese things. Where can they find you? At? <laughs> well, they can find me at Mike Royer Design on Twitter and Instagram, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to keep up with you. Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Valdan, V-A-L-D-A-N, uh, Instagram, Valdan87, or uh, you can head over to Comic UI and uh, find me there, and uh, always listen to me on Superhero Slate, of course. If people want to listen to us, more of us, our regular shows or reviews, and they're just here for our reactions on the commercials, where can they find that at? Well, as always, please visit SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find all the avenues we host our little show and to get our awesome show notes. So if you're listening to a normal weekly news episode, we're going to put up all the notes of all the cool superhero news that we're talking about. So if you want to get links to, like, leaked screenshots or, like, leaked toys that reveal spoilers for the movie, or if you want to see, like, set photos or new posters or links to trailers, hit up our show notes at SuperheroSlate.com. And also check out the notes for this episode if you kind of want to see, like, a semi-chronological rundown of everything that happened during the Super Bowl. We got that there in our show notes and you can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. We'll put it wherever you want it. Let us know where you're listening to the podcast and let us know and we'll, we'll host it there. It's really easy to, for us to, to link up. So you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you can get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. Uh, we love hearing from you. What did you think about these trailers? Which one was your favorite? Which one was the weirdest in your opinion? Do you you agree with me that Michelob Ultra doesn't need to be organic and they should stop doing ASMR commercials, uh, reach out to us on Twitter. You can drop us a comment on YouTube. You can reach out anywhere and we love hearing from you. And if you want to be a super fan of Superhero Slate, all you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we will be here every week. And I I think our next spoiler cast review is probably going to be the Lego movie. That comes out really soon. Correct me if I'm wrong. It might be next week, but I'm planning on seeing that film. So stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed and you'll get our, our review for that movie in your feed soon so that's it chris that's the super bowl that that was it that was it we're done uh don't sue us the nfl for saying the super bowl now, i know everybody else is saying like big game or game night but uh it's just words super bowl super bowl super bowl yeah it's a uh, soup or bowl it's a <laughs> yeah, there soup you go. or bowl that's what i'm saying so you, whatever you want but i mean uh it, yep i it's it, it was a game and in, in some commercials and we will catch <laughs> you guys next week All right, eat more cheese. Bye. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. I'm actually drinking truly hard seltzer. Oh, you actually are drinking that type of drink.